Welcome to Science with Dr. J. This is a series of 40 episodes uh, to talk about science and about our universe, which we are part of and it's part of us, so that we can understand more about nature and how the natural world works. So, ready for some surprises? Let's start. This is home. This is planet Earth. This is where we live. And we are actually going around the sun once every year at the speed of 108,000 kilometers an hour. Is only one out of eight planets in our solar system. Solar system is composed mainly of the sun. The sun is 99% of the mass of the solar system. It's just a star. And one single star out of 200 billion other stars in the Milky Way galaxy. What goes on inside the cells of the butterfly and the structure of the cells of the butterfly and the structure and what goes on inside the cells of the plant are not really that different. They're very, very similar. They look entirely different on the outside, as you can see, but on the inside, they're united. It was even, this experiment was actually done by astronauts on the moon, where there's a circle there in the middle, the eastern part of North America, probably New York, was next door to the west northern part of Africa, which is what, Mauritania and Morocco. Incredible. They were neighbors. Powerful forces can rip all these lands apart, rip those continents, and move them across like that. It's actually getting bigger and bigger in size. It's expanding like a balloon. When you blow a balloon and it expands, the universe is expanding in a similar way. The secret of life is in four letters, G, C, A, and T. That's the secret code of life. When I learned that about 40 years ago, I could not stop learning. So if you examine these 20 amino acids that, that make up my skin, you'll find that they are the same 20 amino acids that make up the protein of any other uh, living thing, whether it's a virus or bacterium or an insect or a lizard or, or a sequoia tree, any living thing on earth has proteins that are made up of the same amino acids. They live in those places. How can a bacterium survive with these high temperatures? In the center of planet earth be more hot than the surface of the sun? What, what, what's the source of all this heat? Where does it come from? I'll tell you how small they are. If you take uh, one of your hairs, uh, I don't have much hair, but if you take one of my hairs, you can fit about 10,000 of these nanotubes inside one human hair. That's how small it is. And yet, it's 100 times stronger than, than steel. It's, uh, it's fascinating how nature sometimes surprises us. So science is a way for us to learn about nature. It's a very, very uh, amazing adventure that, that uh, I'd like to share some of those experiences with you. There is no such thing as Indian science or Chinese science or American science or German science. Science is the same. Science is exactly the same anywhere you go in the world. So it actually unites humanity. It unites us because we all speak the same language of science anywhere we live in the world. We could be wearing different clothes, eating different food, speaking different languages, come from totally different cultures, and yet, when it comes to science, we're completely united. Why am I talking about marching for science? Once you establish a fact is true, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you don't believe in it. Science is not religion. It's not dogma. So, it's, it's, um, once you establish the facts, the facts stand by themselves. Your belief in it or not, should be irrelevant. You can make up any story you want if it's not based on scientific research and experimentation and data. It's just a story. It means nothing. Okay, so it might be entertaining and fun, but we can't take it seriously if it doesn't, if it's not backed up by evidence. Who you are, what your title is, what your position is, how rich you are, your opinion may be respected, may be listened to, but if it's not backed by evidence, it's meaningless. This machine is actually conducting experiments on the surface of Mars. 
snows methane and there are lakes and rivers of methane on the moon Titan. They want to fit the universe to their model. They have an, a certain idea of how the world works and they want to fit or change the universe, change the facts to fit their ideas. Science is exactly the opposite. They believe that when the lightning was striking that he was upset and sending that lightning to punish people. The Viking people, the people from the Scandinavian countries in the old days, used to think that there was a monster that's coming to swallow the sun and eat it up. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> there is no part of gold at the end of the rainbow. Astronomy is a science, astrology is not. But, you know, uh, it's, it's good entertainment, it's fun, but of course you can't take it seriously. It's total nonsense. You have x-ray or MRI or ultrasound or uh, PET scan or CAT scan, all these amazing uh, diagnostic uh, equipment in the hospital to help doctors find out what's wrong in your body. All of that is because of advances in science and our knowledge of how nature works. Drier and drier, the air conditioning, the heating, the radio, the TV, the microwave, the refrigerator, all of these advances that help us have a comfortable life at home came as a result of science and scientific research. If I send a message on my phone now to someone in China, the message goes all the way up to space, the satellites take that message and relay it back to that specific person in China. Isn't that amazing? How about society in general? Let's see um, let's the bigger things, things that are of concern to humanity in general and how science impacts them. There's a limited source of fresh water on planet Earth. It's not really abundant. It's abundant in some areas and some other areas hardly have any. fresh water resources. I find that incomprehensible. So we need to uh, stress more cooperation and more application of scientific knowledge and of a, uh, an advancement in order to make our lives better and not to spend the money on wars and killing and causing harm and destruction and tragedy in our lives. The planet Earth has almost warmed up, warmed up about um, seven-tenths of one degree Celsius in the last hundred years. There are people who think, well, no, we humans don't cause global, uh, global warming. They disregard all the scientific evidence that's abundantly available all over the world in every country on the planet. Certain gases that have a greenhouse effect, actually water vapor is one of them, carbon dioxide is one of them, and methane gas is one of them. All of these are called greenhouse gases. In many areas, Bulldozers are going to clear forest land and kill all the trees and the bushes there. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze, but I'm not sneezing. We'll talk about that in other episodes. Why is it that sometimes you feel like sneezing, but the sneeze doesn't come out? Not enough histamine, but we'll talk about that in a different issue. Sorry about that. Almost sneezed, but it didn't come. Someone came up with a rumor, not based on science. It was totally based on imagination, fiction that vaccines will actually cause other disease and harm your body, so they're not good for you. Really? Without evidence, just make up a statement like that? Unfortunately, the press, which means newspapers, magazines, TV, radio, journalists are not really educated well enough in science to, to, can, to tell what is true and what's not true, so they took the story and made a sensational issue out of it, and this scared a lot of people. As a result, a lot of people are scared of vaccination. They think it's, uh, it's going to kill their children, which was, of course, the opposite. It's going to save their children. And so they stop vaccinating their children. And believe it or not, some of the diseases that we thought were almost eradicated and rarely ever show up anywhere in the world are starting to come back because of parents scared or afraid to give vaccination to their children we can actually change the DNA ourselves. Normally it changes by itself naturally, which we, which we call mutation. Everything that we invent can be used for good or can be used for bad. I'll give you a very simple example. Take a knife. 
I can take a knife to cut someone's arm, or I can use a knife to, in the kitchen to, for my cooking. If we are a monstrous society, we can probably use science to do monstrous things. The virus, the uh, Ebola virus, all these are emerging new diseases caused by viruses, and society in general should understand how to deal with them, and what to do about them, and how to prevent them, how to prepare vaccines for them. Um, that's the viewpoint of science, and the viewpoint of society in general is, well, you know, you, you're causing a lot of harm and pain and suffering for these poor little animals, so we should find an alternative. Those bacteria have evolved as a result of using so much antibiotic by everybody in big quantities everywhere. Those bacteria had natural mutations and changes, and so some of these bacteria became resistant to the antibiotic. They changed enough that the antibiotic does not affect them anymore. In fact, tuberculosis, for example, is a disease caused by a bacterium. It's called mycobacterium. And, you know, it, it has become completely resistant to most of antibiotics known. It's very difficult to, 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 to fight tuberculosis. Big asteroid, about 20 meters in size, 20 meters diameter. Uh, hit an area in Russia called uh, Chelyabinsk. The impact was not that serious. It caused some damage. No one died, fortunately. And that's because the asteroid actually disintegrated, broke into several pieces, exploded before touching uh, uh, the Earth. About 65 million years ago, when all of the dinosaurs became extinct and many other animals. Seventy percent of life on the planet became extinct as a result of that impact of a, of a, of a big asteroid uh, 65 million years ago. The sun is a huge source of energy. Every second the sun sends enough energy to planet Earth to supply humanity's needs for energy for a whole year. The Internet has completely transformed and changed our lives in the last 25, 30 years because uh, there's hardly any activity you do that does not rely on the internet. We can create robots that are very smart and capable. In fact, they can be smarter than us. March for Science is not just the event that took place uh, in April of 2017. To me, March for Science should be a daily event in our minds, in our attitude, in our conversation with people, in the way we deal with society. and. Uh, uh, it is my hope that you will adopt science in your lives, <clears throat> excuse me, whether you, whether you um, uh, consider science as a career in your life or not, uh, uh, just be literate about science, understand it, and understand how it affects our lives. We'll start from the beginning, from the Big Bang, from when the universe first started. Now, if you, if you go from one point to another point at a constant speed, Okay, so you cover a certain distance. But if every second as you go, you increase your speed or you increase your velocity, then this is called acceleration. Three basic units, which are mass, distance, and time, we can calculate force. If you say a thousand is two orders of magnitude bigger than ten, that means it's a hundred times bigger than, than ten. Everything is made of atoms. Every single thing around you is made of atoms. That is the simplest atom, hydrogen. Very simple. There's a proton with a positive charge, and there's an electron orbiting around it with a negative charge. The whole distance from the nucleus to the electron is empty space. Seven billion people on Earth. And remove all the space between the electrons and the nucleus in every atom in their body and squeeze them all together you can squeeze all human beings to the size of a sugar cube. We see color. Where does color come from? It hits drops of water in the air, okay, when it's raining, and so water acts like a prism and breaks that white light into the seven different uh, colored lights that we have, and that's what the rainbow is. Light wavelength that is not absorbed by that object is the orange one. So that's reflected back. 
So that object is orange because it absorbs all the other wavelengths of light except orange. It does not like it. It throws it back at you. And that's why you see it orange. And the same for the other colors. That's what light is. It's an electromagnetic wave, which means it's electricity and magnetism joined together. The electricity is going this way, and the magnetism is going perpendicular to it that way. And that's what light is, which are the seven basic colors that I just explained to you, is actually what we call visible light. Okay? Visible means that our eyes can see it. Does that mean that there's light that is invisible that we cannot see? Yes, there's light that we cannot see. Our eyes cannot see ultraviolet. Some insects, by the way, can see ultraviolet. And we'll talk about that when we discuss biology and flowers later on. Do you see the beam that goes from your remote control to, the, to your TV? You don't see it because infrared light is not visible to us, but it's there. Snakes um, actually use infrared sensing because infrared has a lot of heat in it. So snakes can sense that heat. They can sense the heat of infrared. And we also have cameras that can sense heat. So if this man is in a room, and we are not in that room, we're outside of that room, between us there's a wall, we can actually use special cameras that can sense the heat through the wall and give us an image of that person. Every single one of us is radiating heat uh, in the infrared range, and cameras can sense that. You can't see it, but it's there, and you can measure it. Light goes at the speed of 300,000 kilometers per second, and nothing can go faster than the speed of light. That's a maximum speed limit when you're looking at the sun going down in the horizon. The sun is not there. A light year is a measurement of distance. Although we use the word year, which measures time, you have to be careful. Light year means distance, not time. And the light year is a distance covered by light in one year. And it's about 10 million million kilometers or 10 trillion kilometers. Can you imagine if you, if you weigh 50 or 60 kilograms and we change all of your mass into energy, then you, the amount of energy that your body will produce will be equal to something like 60,000 atomic bombs. So with this famous formula, E equals mc squared. You see that on T-shirts, you see that everywhere. The most famous formula in the world. A lot of people know it but they don't know what it means. All of us experience that when you hear a police car or an ambulance or a fire truck. When they're coming from a distance, you know, you hear the, the pitch. But as they pass through and they come to you, the pitch becomes very, very loud. But as they, as they go beyond you to the other direction, then the pitch becomes very, very low again. So the weakest force is gravity, which surprises because uh, I mean, here I'm sitting on planet Earth. I can't do anything because of gravity. I can't fly. I can't w run very fast. I can't do much because gravity holds me down. And yet gravity is actually the weakest force we know. The whole planet Earth is pulling that toy airplane down. And yet this little boy, about a year old, with his tiny muscles, is able to pick the airplane against the gravitational pull of the whole planet Earth and hold it up in the air. We are 150 million kilometers away from the sun, and yet the gravity of the sun still holds planet Earth, and we're going in orbit around it because of gravitational force between us and the sun.